If our era is the next industrial revolution, as many claim, AI is surely one of its driving forces. I believe in human-centered AI to benefit people in positive and benevolent ways. I often tell my students not to be misled by the name artificial intelligence. There is nothing artificial about it. AI is made by humans, intended to behave by humans, and, ultimately, to impact humans' lives and human society. As a technologist, I see how AI and the fourth industrial revolution will impact every aspect of people's lives. This is the world where our children will live, and technology should reflect that diverse world. With technology and a little love, we can make it a better place for them. AI is everywhere. It's not that big, scary thing in the future. AI is here with us. Just like the brain consists of billions of highly connected neurons, a basic operating unit in a neural network is a neuron-like node. It takes input from other nodes and sends output to others. More than 500 million years ago, vision became the primary driving force of evolution's Big Bang, the Cambrian Explosion, which resulted in explosive speciation of the animal kingdom. 500 million years later, AI technology is at the verge of changing the landscape of how humans live, work, communicate, and shape our environment. Even a cat has things it can do that AI cannot. We all have a responsibility to make sure everyone, including companies, governments, and researchers, develop AI with diversity in mind. Yes, we have prototyped cars that can drive by themselves, but without smart vision, they cannot really tell the difference between a crumpled paper bag on the road, which can be run over, and a rock that size, which should be avoided. Understanding vision and building visual systems is really understanding intelligence. For me, it's very important to think about AI's impact in the world, and one of the most important missions is to democratize this technology. The real existential challenge is to live up to your fullest potential, along with living up to your intense sense of responsibility and to be honest to yourself about what you want. We will not only use the machines for their intelligence, we will also collaborate with them in ways that we cannot even imagine. I believe AI and its benefits have no borders. Whether a breakthrough occurs in Silicon Valley, Beijing, or anywhere else, it has the potential to make everyone's life better for the entire world. Weaponized AI is probably one of the most sensitized topics of AI, if not the most. If you were a computer and read all the AI articles and extracted out the names that are quoted, I guarantee you that women rarely show up. For every woman who has been quoted about AI technology, there are a hundred more times men were quoted. I consider the pixel data in images and video to be the dark matter of the internet. I don't know what would happen if the media starts picking up a theme that Google is secretly building AI weapons or AI technologies to enable weapons for the defense industry. As one of the leaders in the world for AI, I feel tremendous excitement and responsibility to create the most awesome and benevolent technology for society and to educate the most awesome and benevolent technologists, that's my calling. No one tells a child how to see, especially in the early years. 
They learn this through real-world experiences and examples. I'm a go-getter. It's in my DNA. If I spend a lot of time lamenting on the difficulties, then it could be distracting. I didn't make a lot of friends in high school. It's a cruel time, and I was very geeky. If someone has a fantastic biology background, he or she can contribute in AI and healthcare. AI has many aspects. I love Silicon Valley, but there is a dominant voice of tech is cool, tech is geeky, tech is a guy with a hoodie. The day healthcare can fully embrace AI is the day we have a revolution in terms of cutting costs and improving care. We need to inject humanism into our AI education and research by injecting all walks of life into the process. From the day an idea is conceptualized to the day the technology is built, carried out, and regulated, it's important to have that human awareness. It is deeply against my principles to work on any project that I think is to weaponize AI. When I was a graduate student in computer science in the early 2000s, computers were barely able to detect sharp edges in photographs, let alone recognize something as loosely defined as a human face. Making AI more sensitive to the full scope of human thought is no simple task. The solutions are likely to require insights derived from fields beyond computer science, which means programmers will have to learn to collaborate more often with experts in other domains. Governments can make a greater effort to encourage computer science education, especially among young girls racial minorities, and other groups whose perspectives have been underrepresented in AI. What makes humans unique is that evolution gave us the most incredible and sophisticated vision system, motor system, and language system, and they all work together. There's a great phrase, written in the 70s, the definition of today's AI is a machine that can make a perfect chess move while the room is on fire. It really speaks to the limitations of AI. In the next wave of AI research, if we want to make more helpful and useful machines, we've got to bring back the contextual understanding. The cloud is this gigantic computing vehicle that delivers computing services to every single industry. There is great potential to use computer vision technology in a constructive and benevolent way. I believe in the future of AI changing the world. The question is, who is changing AI? It is really important to bring diverse groups of students and future leaders into the development of AI. The paradigm shift of the ImageNet thinking is that while a lot of people are paying attention to models, let's pay attention to data. Data will redefine how we think about models. One thing ImageNet changed in the field of AI is suddenly people realized the thankless work of making a data set was at the core of AI research. AI will impact every industry on Earth, including manufacturing, agriculture, healthcare, and more. When eyes were first developed in animals, suddenly animal life becomes proactive. The tools and technologies we developed are really the first few drops of water in the vast ocean of what AI can do. AI-assisted driving is a perfect platform for advancing fundamental human-centric artificial intelligence research while also producing practical applications. 
Autonomous driving provides a scenario where AI can deliver smart tools for assistance in decision-making and planning to human drivers. Besides publishing its own work, the Google AI China Center will also support the AI research community by funding and sponsoring AI conferences and workshops and working closely with the vibrant Chinese AI research community. Technology could benefit or hurt people, so the usage of tech is the responsibility of humanity as a whole, not just the discoverer. I am a person before I'm an AI technologist. As nature discovered early on, vision is one of the most powerful secret weapons of an intelligent animal to navigate, survive, interact, and change the complex world it lives in. The only path to build intelligent machines is to enable it with powerful visual intelligence just like what animals did in evolution. I imagine a world in which AI is going to make us work more productively, live longer, and have cleaner energy. Smart CEOs should be thinking about AI and its impact on their respective business. As for me, I'm an optimist. I really believe there are no borders for science. AI cloud is just very, very nascent. We talk a lot about building benevolent technology. Our technology reflects our values.